Hey everyone, welcome to Jason Explains Things. I have an awesome outdoor project for you today. I'm building four large raised garden beds for my wife to plant a variety of vegetables. We're building these to last many years to come and we're gonna be tapping into our existing irrigation system so that all the watering can be handled by our timer. It's been a little while since I've done any woodworking here on the channel, so I'm excited to get this project underway. Let's get started. Over here, come on. First step in this project was to prepare the garden area. The ground was not level at all. Also, there were some large plants in the way, so those had to go. So we're kind of filling in uh, bare spots and dips in the ground. So we're making really quick work of this. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, since all the bare spots are now filled, is I'm gonna go get a two by four and a four foot level. We're gonna find all of the uh, biggest dips in this area. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly level, but I want it to be as level as possible so that the flower beds can all be evenly spaced, all be level in proportion to each other. Uh, just do it right. Do it right or pay the price. <laughs> the second step was to make some plans. I wanted the garden area to be symmetrical so that it looked great, so I measured this entire area and then drew up this basic map. The tree here is directly in the middle of the garden, kind of the centerpiece, if you will. We did consider cutting it down for sunlight reasons, but this part of the house gets tons of sun as it is, and I like how it looks, so it stays. I used the same two by four and level to make sure the pavers were also level. When one wasn't, I would just stand on it and twist down or add some rock underneath to raise it up. Okay, so here is a beautiful and rather expensive pile of cedar lumber we're gonna be making our four boxes out of. I've been getting a lot of comments on my past build videos to, uh, saying, Jason, please supply a material list and a cut list. So I'm gonna be actually doing that right now uh, and I'm gonna do it per box so you can scale it up or down depending on how many you're making. The box is going to be roughly 18 inches high, 90 inches long, and 45 inches wide. For each box, I'm going to need nine cedar decking boards, two cedar two by fours, one one by four cedar trim board that I'll be ripping down with the table saw, and 24 feet of plastic liner. Okay, so that's the rough material list you're gonna need and the rough design per box. Let's go over the cut list. I'm gonna need six 45 inch long cedar decking boards, six 88 inch long cedar decking boards, four 16 and a half inch long cedar two by twos, two 15 inch long cedar two by fours, and one 43 inch long cedar two by four. I'll go into more detail about the trim pieces later on in the video. And also I'm gonna be cutting everything for all four boxes uh, in a row so I can do this as efficiently as possible. Last thing before we get into the cutting montage, I'm gonna briefly show you the tools you're gonna to need. Tools are super basic for this project. You're gonna need an impact driver, a drill, tape measure, a staple gun, a razor blade, the countersink drill bits, a speed square. The screws there in the wide shot are actually a bit too long. For this project, I exclusively use these two inch long exterior wood screws. Levels, pencil, chop saw, and a table saw. The plastic liner I'm gonna be using is 40 millimeters thick, heavy duty, clear plastic. You can also use black plastic, it's up to you. And then I'm going to be sealing the outside of each box with this Thompson's water seal clear sealant. Again, that is just for the outside of the box, not the inside. All right, let's get cutting. Chop, 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 chop.
Later. Hey, well looking good. Every box is now complete. I've also gone ahead and squared each box up to the side of the house also to each other So they're all looking symmetrical. Uh, I'm really really pleased with the way this is turning out Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Thompson's water seal on the exterior of the boxes And then we're gonna put the plastic liner on the inside officially tired, but check it out. All four garden beds are stained and the plastic liner is installed. And I've got a big trailer full of dirt back there to show you. We gave the old Dodge back there the day off and my dad came and helped me out for a few minutes getting a about three yards of garden soil here from a local nursery. Now you might be tempted to ask me, Jason, are you gonna be adding any um, manure, any fertilizer to this new soil? Well, the answer is no. This awesome uh, garden mix I got at the nursery does not need it. If you stand close to this, you're gonna realize that uh, this is plenty of fertilized as it is. I'm reminded of the great Jeff Goldblum when he said. That is one big pile of poop. So a couple things came to me overnight about this project that I decided to tackle first thing this morning before planting any new plants. Number one, I'm gonna use some cedar trim and that way I can pinch the, uh, the plastic liner up against the wood. That's gonna make the plastic liner look a, lot, look a lot nicer, also last a lot longer because that way it won't snag on things. You know, I just think it makes it look cleaner. It's gonna last longer that way. Second thing is yesterday I did stain the center support two by fours. Uh, I really shouldn't have done that. I, I don't know why I did. It's totally a brain fart on my part. So this morning, uh, bit the bullet and I'm replacing all of the two by four supports, center supports with uh, some untreated wood. Uh, so these are gonna be really safe. They look really nice and they're gonna last forever. like it? I love it. Thank you. So we're getting planting underway. I want to quickly kind of go over how we're going to be doing the irrigation and watering for the flower beds. Uh, tapping into an existing uh, watering line we have here. This is 5 8 of uh, irrigation tubing that uh, waters these fruit trees. I just uh, installed a T fitting here. 90 degree elbow here. 90 degree elbow. I'm just using uh, half inch conduit uh, brackets to keep this in place. Then we're going to a uh, shutoff valve hose fitting. And then from here, you have your 5 8 tubing down to the end. And then you actually then tap in to the tube. And then you have these little uh, Mr. Sprinkler things, right? For each plant. Cool. Yeah, Bub so uh, bubblers. Bubblers. We're doing bubblers, not misters. Sorry. Yeah. That's what we're doing. All right, well, we're, I'm gonna keep planting with the family here. Thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully this video was inspiring. Hopefully uh, you feel now comfortable undertaking a build similar to this. It really isn't that hard. You can do it. You totally can do it yourself too. All right, well, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, go ahead and watch your other favorite Jason Explains Things video. Uh, they're all good, trust me. <laughs> and I'll catch you all real soon. Bye.